Welcome to the Niche Pursuits Podcast. Are you ready to discover some niche business ideas that actually work? Well, it's time for a motivational kick to jumpstart your next big idea. Here's your host, Spencer Haas. Hey everyone, Spencer here and welcome to the Niche Pursuits Podcast. I'm excited to introduce to you Perry Rosenblum. He's an entrepreneur that started a blog about his passion for hiking and quickly learned many lessons about search engines and more. He was able to leverage what he learned and created several other niche sites that gave him the earnings he needed to quit his full-time job. I'm excited to interview Perry, Perry today and let him tell his story about what has worked, what hasn't, and what he's doing now. So Perry, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Spencer. It's uh, good to be here and hi to the Niche Pursuits audience. Awesome. It's great to have you. Um, yeah, it was awesome to read a little bit about your story. You contacted me uh, by email, and uh, as I did a little bit of research on you, I, I read your story about how you had created a blog um, about hiking and um, visiting Glacier National Park. And so I, I wanted to dig into a little bit about that. Um, but first, maybe you can tell me about your own background. What sort of schooling and work experience did you have before you ever created your Glacier Travel Guide? Sure, yeah. Um, so my work experience before Glacier, or before my uh, Glacier National Park Travel Guide website, um, was uh, the restaurant industry. You okay. know, flipping burgers and serving tables and that sort of stuff. Um, I went to school out at the University of Michigan and uh, majored in film and video. So, you know, that was sort of like the, the lazy man's uh, English degree. So because <laughs> instead of reading novels, you just got to watch movies and write about them. Nice. Uh, yeah, you know, it was good. Not very practical unless you want to go to Hollywood, which I didn't. Um, well, what was so, your thinking for going into film? Um, you know, actually, I was <laughs> I, I'm I'm a writer. I love to write. And I went to film school to be trained in screenwriting. And uh you know, I, I've written a number of screenplays, uh, probably about five or six completed ones. And after I graduated, I moved out to Colorado um, to sort of just work on my scripts and keep writing. And and after, you know, about seven or eight months or so of working in the restaurant industry and uh, writing scripts, I started to think that it was going to be pretty um, – near impossible to make a living from writing screenplays. Um, mm -hmm. And so I just started researching other ways to uh, make money from writing. Um, and eventually I stumbled across um, people who were making careers and making a living online by writing content-driven websites. And uh, so that sort of led me down the path to creating um, my own network of websites, and in particular my Glacier website. Okay, very cool. So, yeah, I like the um, approach or the angle that you came at it with uh, as a writer, um, which w was different than my approach. People that have listened to my story sort of know my background a little bit, but I, I came at it more out of a curiosity just to see if I could build a website um, more of as a hobby just to see how it was all done, I guess, if you will. And that led me down my journey. But you were um, a writer or are a writer uh, from the get-go, which is definitely a huge advantage in this business. Um, so so why, why did you pick Glacier? Uh, was that your first site that you ever built? You know, why, why did you build the Glacier Travel Guide site? Sure, yeah. Um, it was actually the second website I ever built. Um, the first website I built was when I was in seventh grade. I uh, built an HTML website for my uh, middle school's library, um, and it nice. was just absolutely atrocious. It was so, <laughs> so ugly. Um, none of those HTML skills really carried over beyond uh, seventh grade. Um, so how did you get commissioned to do that in seventh grade? Why did ah, you? You know, my mom uh, is a librarian for the school district I ah. I went to, and um, I was like, yeah, I want to figure it out. I like computers. Um, <laughs> so, I, uh, you know, there was no pay. It was just uh, fun to figure out and fun to learn. Um, no way is that website still up. <laughs> but uh, I chose to do my site on Glacier um, because I spent two summers working there. And uh, the, the program, the, the website – 
um, content management system I use is something called Site Build It. Um, and there was like a whole training tutorial they go through for people that build sites through them, um, which really helped me a lot in the beginning. And they really encourage that you build a website around your passion. And I worked two summers in Glacier. I loved the place um, and I knew all about it. And I figured that I could write a really great guidebook to Glacier National Park uh, from the perspective of a former park employee and really add a lot of value to the Internet that way. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you can. And I, you know, I'm sure that you did and, and you have with your site. I mean, coming at it with really more of an expert approach is something that you've experienced firsthand. You've traveled through the park. Um, absolutely. That's going to provide tremendous value for people that are searching and, you know, looking for your site. So maybe give us a little bit of history of the site. Um, you know, how long did it take for you for the site to start performing well? Um, and if you can give us an idea of maybe traffic or income numbers for how it's performing now or at least maybe at its peak? Sure, yeah. Um, it's actually at its peak right now in terms of income. It's uh, constantly been growing, which is nice. Um, awesome. Always good to see that. Um, it started off as just like this atrocious – HTML, static HTML website. Um, it looked so ugly. Um, I mean, it, it looked like a 10-year-old had designed it. Um, but probably 10-year-olds are even better at designing websites. I mean, you can go to <laughs> archive.org and take a look at what the site used to look like. Um, so I started off with that. Um, and just really, I, I really just focused on writing content. Um, it was really important to me to get my perspective across and write in my own voice. And so, I mean, I was writing – every morning I was writing an article, um, and then I was going and waiting tables that evening. Um, shortly afterwards, I uh, got hired by an, a local SEO company to write content for their clients, and I had no idea what SEO was at the time. Um, so I started writing content for cosmetic surgeons, um, accident attorneys, things of that nature. Um, all the while I was still writing for my site, still waiting tables, sort of, uh, juggling all three. Um, it took, I'm not sure, you know, I have an article on my site at SEO Sherpas about how long it took me to actually earn money from the site. Um, it took me a long time. It, uh, you know, now it gets anywhere from 800 to 900 visits per day in the slow season, um, most of it is organic traffic. Um, and then in the busy season, I get between 1,500 to 2,000 visits per day. Nice. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it pays the bills and it, it gets some good traffic. And, but I mean, it took me forever to get there. I, let's see, I'm looking at my site right now. Um, it took me a long time to, to make my first $100. Um, Okay. Now, now, when to get a little bit of perspective, when did you create the site? Um, do you remember the year? Yeah, it was. I'm pretty certain it was in 2008. Um, in August of 2008. Okay. Uh, I can check domain tools right now. No, it just gives us a general idea. That's yeah. So it was it was around August 2008 that I started it. Okay. Um, and. Yeah, it took me until around um, June of 2009 to make $100. <laughs> okay, so, so um, almost a year, you know. Well, almost a year, so. yeah. And uh, so $100 through affiliate marketing. Um, I made about $100 in AdSense um, by around uh, April of 2009. Um, so it took a long time to get any sort of income going on the site. But I sort of knew that I was in for the long haul and that, um, you know, my, my whole goal with it, uh, as I told my girlfriend, who's now my wife was, you know, all I wanted to do was be able to pay my rent. If I could pay my rent every month in passive income from my website, I would be thrilled. Um, well, eventually I, I got to the point where I was able to pay my rent. Um, that was, I'm pretty certain it was March of 2010 that I paid my rent. Um, nice. And at that point, we were living in a townhouse in Boulder, and and uh, my share of the rent was about $550. Um, 
Um, then in April, the next month, um, I paid both of our rent <laughs> from my site. Um, and it only sort of, it only like snowballed from there um, to the point that we bought a house in Louisville, Colorado um, about two years ago, put 20% down, and it was all from income generated from my websites. Awesome. Primarily Glacier. Uh, that, that's the big guy for mm-hmm. me. Yeah, and we're going to go into maybe a little bit other sites that you have, but I do want to focus on this first one here sure. a little bit. Um, so it does. I mean, it obviously is a long process. Created in 2008, you were putting up lots of content for about a year before you even made a hundred dollars, essentially. Um, and then it it started to grow a little bit quicker after that. But when you first got started, were you just writing about whatever you knew about Glacier? How, how did you pick the topics and sure. were you being specific with keyword choice and things like that? Fantastic question. Um, the content management system that I was using, Site Build It, um, they actually have a, a keyword research tool built into it. Mm-hmm. Um, and they actually even have a sort of like a, a guide to make sure that you're incorporating all of the best practices for SEO. Um, and so their, their keyword tool uses Word Tracker's API to pull back um, the demand of keywords, how often a keyword is searched for every month. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they use a variety of metrics to determine um, the competition levels. Um, and it's it's been very accurate, actually. Um, I found it to be one of the most accurate keyword research tools I've, I've ever used, and I still use it to this day, um, in addition to others. Mm-hmm. Um, so they sort of give you a a page analyzer for every single page that you upload. Uh, I think it's, it's fairly similar to Yoast's SEO plugin mm-hmm. where it just, it just analyzes. It makes sure that you, they really push, you know, SEO best practices. So you pick one or two keywords um, to target per page and make sure that those keywords are incorporated in the, you know, the really important spots in the, in the URL structure, in the title tags, the meta descriptions and things of that nature. And they analyze your page for you. Um, so it was really great for somebody not knowing anything about SEO to just sort of have, um, you know, just uh, guidance to make sure that your content is readable to the search engines and readable to humans. Um, yeah. Now, how, how important do you think that was that from the get go, you were at least targeting some sort of keywords? Because I know a lot of people when they first create a blog or, or a site, they, they don't know about SEO and keyword research at all and maybe are just writing blindly. Um, do you think that that's uh, been pretty important? I, I think that was essential and, and still is essential. I mean, you got to have an action plan, uh, in my opinion, with anything you do in life. Um, you don't want to just be stabbing in the dark. Otherwise you're just could be wasting your time. Um, you know, there's plenty of people out there that make a a great website online without any knowledge of SEO, um, and without any SEO best practices. But I mean, the organic traffic from Google is more valuable than any traffic I've encountered besides email list traffic, um, from my own email lists, of course. Um, and by having the SEO best practices instilled that you instilled in you early on and you know not like keyword spam and not spamming anything and but just making sure that your titles are formed correctly with the keywords and and that you're just targeting things people search for um, you know you don't a big company doesn't develop a marketing campaign um, for you know axe deodorant and then throw it on my little pony uh, on Hulu or something, you know, you got, you gotta be targeting your audience. And, right. um, that's, that's what SEO best practices are all about is, uh, finding out what your audience is searching for and developing content to target that in a, in a great way. Absolutely. Um, I could, uh, reemphasize that point over and over again, but uh, I do that so much already on my blog, um, <laughs> that we'll move on to some of the other topics, but absolutely. Um, being able to write content properly with the right keyword choice is, is just one of those basic things that you absolutely need to be doing. Um, now 
you know, it sounds like you worked on it for, you know, really almost about two years before you had probably any real significant traffic as, or, or income at least. Was, was there some sort of tipping point? Did something happen that brought in a bunch more traffic or something that you did? Um, it, you know, what were some other factors that led to your success? Um, you know, it's hard to pinpoint a, that's a great question, but it's really hard to pinpoint now. Um, I, I mean, great content was key. I marketed the site as best as I could. Um, you know, I marketed it to hotels out there to let them know about it. Just like, you know, basic link building 101, making people know about your website. Um, and what really led to, I guess, a tipping point in terms of, of traffic and, and income, it's hard to say because the, it really started to accelerate in March and April, which is consistently the busiest when busy season begins for me. Um, March through September is really busy for me. Mm -hmm. So things could have been improving in terms of my keyword ranking and traffic um, before that, and I just wouldn't have known because traffic level stayed stable. Um, but in terms of income, I really just started focusing on um, developing, um, recommending gear that people would want to buy if they're going to Glacier National Park for camping in Glacier or hiking in Glacier um, and monetizing the website uh, via affiliate marketing. Um, okay, let, let's focus on that a little bit, your, your monetization strategy. Um, you know, I, I popped over to your site here today and I know that you're using – a couple of different things. You are using Google AdSense, it looks like, on the site, but then you also have um, some affiliate links. Um, where is most of your income coming from? Um, and uh, yeah, what what networks perhaps are you using? Sure. Um, a while ago, you know, AdSense was great for me for a while. Um, it probably still would be better, but I don't have it in the um, optimal positions. Um, my sites were making from AdSense, you know high three to low four figures a month um, during th their peaks. Um, but I've sort of moved AdSense away from the optimal positions just to sort of increase the user experience. Mm -hmm. um, and so AdSense is a decent income revenue or revenue source for me. Um, but really it's affiliate marketing uh, that pulls in the vast majority of income on my, on my Glacier site. Um, and I, I'm sorry, I'm not sure if I fully answered your question there or not. Well, no, no, you did. Uh, maybe I can just dig a little bit deeper. I mean, um, do you have an email list that you're using on the site? Um, are you using um, Amazon products or is there any other particular affiliate network that you're using more than others? Oh, sure, yeah. So, um, you know, I do have an email list on the site and that generates some nice some nice cash flow. Um, you know, I notify people of new articles when they go up once a month um, and notify them of sales that are going on in the outdoor industry. Um, I do use Amazon as, a, and as an affiliate program as well, um, or at least my company does. Um, mm -hmm. And I use Avant Link as uh, my – Avant Link is my primary um, affiliate network that I use. And they're really big in the outdoor industry. Uh, they have the biggest names, um, and the biggest names are elsewhere as well, but I really love their reporting. Um, I love their tools. Um, so I send a lot of traffic to places like REI, uh, to Backcountry, to Moose Jaw. Uh, those are the th big three for me. Um, and you know, I've developed great relationships with my account managers over the years um, and send them you know, a lot of sales, um, yeah. and it's uh, been a great relationship. And and most of the conversions for me come through um, organic traffic through Google. Um, mm -hmm. People searching for hiking shoes for Glacier, um, or camping tents for Glacier, or you know, sleeping bag reviews, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So do you ha do you get? Um... Or have you done any sort of paid advertising campaigns or anything like that? Um, you know, I had one company advertise on the site for a little while. Um, but I, I found that 
uh, there aren't huge marketing budgets for the companies out there in Glacier. Um, right. And it might just be a little too niche for me to be able to um, make it worth my time. The amount of time I spent trying to get an advertiser and then getting them and dealing with all the headaches. I mean, it was just for a few hundred bucks. It it just wasn't worth it. Um, I might be able to do better now, um, but, you know, I've just focused on what's worked and uh, affiliate marketing and great content's uh, been what has uh, done it for me so far. Yeah, absolutely. So... So at what point um, did you then decide to go out and create other sites? Um, I know you mentioned that you've built several other niche sites after you saw the success with your Glacier site. Um, you know, how many did you build and how many do you have? Um, yeah, so I have about a dozen websites now that I own and operate. Um, Glacier is by far the biggest, by far um, earns the most. Um about a year and a few months after I started Glacier, I started a site on camping tents, and um, it was doing pretty well, um, but it, it's been hit by updates over the years, um, particularly uh, Panda and Penguin, um, and just recently the exact match domain update um, to the point that it's not much of a, an earner anymore. Um, and then I also started, you know, I just... I guess uh, about two years after starting Glacier, I got hired at a company um, in Boulder where I was uh, in charge of developing a lot of different niche websites. And, you know, we developed about 50 different websites in various uh, verticals. And I was in charge of sort of just like pushing Google as far as I could to test out this advertising platform. And during that time, I also, I learned how to scale development up pretty well. And so I developed a few other, my few other sites, um, one uh, in or two in the online education space, mm-hmm. um, which you know they certainly peaked and they did great for a time, but they don't pull in anything anymore. Um, uh, one on binoculars, which is one of the most comprehensive review sites and really well received by the birding community, and that's still doing great. Um, and the other website. And then I have two other websites, Um, one that I actually purchased um, back in May of this year, April or May of this year. I I bought the website and um, transitioned it over to WordPress and monetized it and made the purchase price back in about four or five months, which was great. And then uh, this new website my wife and I have been building up called OutdoorEquipment.com. And uh, I bought the domain name about a year and a half ago and uh we've been focusing focusing on trying to build a website for the way google is headed and you know i, I built a lot my best website's glacier and it's been a steady earner for a reason and that's because it has fantastic content um yeah and absolutely um sorry i'm going to jump in here real quick you covered quite a bit there oh yeah sure and, and i'm going to dig a little bit deeper here uh, with some additional questions you talked about the fact that you were hired by an SEO company in Boulder, which I find pretty interesting. Um, I'm sure they taught you quite a bit. And then you mentioned several other sites um, that you've either built, you purchased a site, uh, your wife and, and you are now working on OutdoorEquipment.com. Um, and so, so there's a lot that you have going on and a lot that we could cover, but I think for people out there listening, they, they want to know what's working. You know, what can they do right now to go out and build either a niche site or something that they're more passionate about, like you did with your Glacier Travel Guide site, um, that they can go out and what are your recommendations for getting ranked in Google? Is it link building? Is it keyword choice? Um, maybe give us some best practices, I guess, is what I'm, I'm looking for. Sure. Yeah. Um, to take a step back real fast, it actually, it wasn't an SEO company that hired me. It was oh, a, okay. a local, at, a, a startup here in Boulder that's, uh, sort of trying to revolutionize the way, um, internal linking is going on. And it was my job sort of to be the SEO team for it. Okay. Um, so they didn't really teach me. I, I learned a lot about business, but I didn't learn a lot about SEO. That was all self-taught. Gotcha. Um, So what my recommendations would be, um, 
I'd recommend getting a copy of some keyword research tool. Um, and really just, you know, I, I mention this all the time over at SEO Sherpas to build a website around something you're passionate about. Don't try and do too much. Um, you know, if I, if I could, I probably would have, sometimes I wonder what would happen if I only focused on my Glacier website, um, because it's so well received and does so well. Um, I would really recommend just building a site on your passion and expect to not make much money from it for a long time. Um, focus on, you know, get a good keyword research tool and develop a content strategy, research your keywords, find about a hundred keywords that are relevant to your niche, um, that of something you're passionate about and then hit the keyboard and start writing. You know, even if you're, if you shoot for one article a week, in two years, you'll have a hundred articles of your, on your site of really, ideally phenomenal content. Um, and the rest generally should take care of itself. Um, that's been my experience in, in building great websites. You know, there, there are ways to try and accelerate things. Um, and I, I would recommend after you have, you know, 50 articles of really tremendous content on your site that you market it appropriately, find other people in your niche and let them know about your website. Um, don't focus on link building the way a lot of people m might recommend that you link build. Um, you know, there's a lot of garbage out there, garbage advice. Um, use your gut and, and build a site for people, not for search engines. Mm -hmm. um, and in the end, I mean, you do all those things, you should succeed. And if you're not, um, after two years and 100 pieces of content that are really tremendous and you're not succeeding, come on over, give me a ring at seosherpas.com <laughs> and uh, I'll analyze your site and give you a free site audit to, uh, to get you on track to success. There you go. So it, it sounds like a big focus is obviously the content, the keyword research and, and writing great articles, um, getting it out there. I totally agree. Um, and if you can find something that you're passionate about, that is where you're going to provide the highest value, definitely. Um, so I agree with that. And then uh, link building, uh, you, you, you shared um, that it's, uh, it can be done, but it, it's done appropriately more using more natural techniques like building relationships with other bloggers, marketing your site, um, and, and things like that. Do you... Do you have any other specific link building techniques or, um, I, you know, I, I've interviewed other people that um, a couple that do absolutely no link building whatsoever. You know, they, they essentially just focus on great content and then others that have very specific link building techniques where they're building out private blog networks and, you know, all sorts of automated tools and this, that and the other. Um, right. Do you have any link building specific techniques or, or is yeah, um, you know, I certainly have um, my own techniques and mm -hmm. I, I've shared a, a number actually over on my site and I'll, I'll share some here as well. Um, I don't use any automated tools. Um, it, it might work for some and, you know, some people really love it. Um, I'm of the opinion that don't do anything on a site on your baby that uh, could get you burned by Google. Um, I, I don't build private blog networks and interlink them. Um, I focus on acquiring links that will send me quality traffic um, to people who are in my niche. Um, for example, um, I'll give uh, a, a quick overview of a technique I've described before on how to get some high uh, PR backlinks. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I'm a big fan, I'm a big fan of automation and scale, or not automation, I'm a big fan of scalable techniques. Um, and in order to be successful, you know, when I was in my old job, I had to have a lot of scalable techniques when we were marketing 50 different websites at the same time. Right. So 
one thing you could do, and this is what I did with um, my website on binoculars. Um, and the key to, to successful link building, in my opinion, is having awesome content to begin with. If you don't have awesome content, you're not going to be able to get awesome links. And awesome links impact you in the search engines, but just as importantly, they send you high quality traffic um, that can convert into newsletter subscribers or purchase something through your affiliate links, things of that nature. Um, so what you can do is, excuse me, you can figure, find a, um, figure out what kind of clubs are related to your niche. So for my binocular website, um, I went out and I looked at what kind of clubs would be related to um, people who were interested in binoculars. Mm -hmm. In this case, um, bird watchers are really interested in binoculars. Makes people who are into astronomy are really into astro astronomical binoculars. So what I then did is using SEO Quake's toolbar, I, I would do searches for site colon – uh, or I'm sorry, all in title, colon, space, quote, bird watching clubs, or Audubon, which is another term for bird watching clubs, or birding clubs, or astronomy clubs, or birding organizations. Mm -hmm. And what all in title does is it pulls back um, a list of websites in Google that use a particular phrase in their meta title. Um, so if you use if you use that somewhat advanced um, search query, uh, expand your search results to 100 per page and use SEO Quake's toolbar, you can then scrape Google search results, scrape the top 100 sites for that keyword or for that query, repeat that multiple times, and you can have a list of 800 to 1,000 high quality relevant websites that would be interested in your content. Mm-hmm. There you can then what you do is you go and you market it to them, and you can use some techniques such as um, outsourcing the contact information to Amazon Turk, where you can get the um, emails and names of those websites for about two cents per website. Um, you know, there's some manual review that you have to do. Um, you can use a tool that I've recently started using called Buzzstream to get the contact information. And essentially then mail merge emails to write personalized emails to members of these clubs and organizations, um, letting them know about your website. You're not asking for a link. You're just saying something like, hey, uh, have you seen my site? Uh, I figure it could be a really great resource for your members. And that's it. Follow up with them, develop relationships, and you'll get those links. Um, and that's what I've done with my bot binocular website to get it onto the front page for terms such as binocular reviews and bird watching binoculars and things of that nature. So in that example that you gave, what sort of success rate might you have? If you, you know, send out a thousand emails uh, to these people or these sites that you've found, you know, I'm sure it's a, a fairly low response rate, but still some sort of success. Um, you know, I can uh, pull that up right now for you. Um, okay. Specifically, uh, it might take me a second here um, as I tracked everything in a spreadsheet. Um, no, I think that would be awesome to give people um, an idea, uh, you know, if they're going to try and use this technique for what sort of response rate they might um, might expect to get. Sure, yeah. Um, I have the spreadsheet pulled up. It's just going to take me a minute to, to sort through everything here. Um, so I reached out in total to, let's see here. And, and to clarify, you were essentially sending the exact same email to, to all these people, just sort of that, that brief message at yes, least initially. initially, but it was personalized. Um, right. You know, I got the, the president of the organization's um, contact information. Right. Um, and I think that's a... Uh, pretty essential to to make sure that they're um, personalized okay um, because otherwise that that will increase your success rate there um, so sorry this is taking me a little longer than I anticipated um, that's okay if, if you're not able to find it there I mean it's 
that, oh no, I, well. I got the spreadsheet in front of me. It's just a matter of uh, sorting it properly. I, I recently switched over to a uh, to a Mac, and um, having difficult time with. Uh, There's a learning curve, apparently, huh? Yeah, with Excel, it's just <laughs> not as uh, straightforward for me to be able to sort for some reason. Okay, so I reached out in total through this technique to about 840 people, um, 40 different organizations. Of those people, um, I got links from, let me see here. You, and I, I don't see the count button here anymore. It's a, uh, there you go. I got 66 links. Um, wow. And I mean, these are, these are high quality websites. Um, they're bird watching organizations that have a lot of weight. And again, it's not, it's not the link to um, manipulate Google. I would, you know, it's not, I wasn't requesting anchor text manipulation. Um, you know, let them link how they want to link. Um, but the best part about it is those links send me a lot of traffic every day. Um, you know, and it's high quality traffic. It's people who are bird watchers or into astronomy and their club is recommending a website to research their next pair of binoculars on. Mm -hmm. And, um, that sends traffic, which converts into, um, paying customers to, uh, binoculars.com and, and other sites I'm associated with for that website. Yeah, um, no, I think that's a great technique that you explained there. I mean, that's, that's a pretty high success rate, actually. It's a little over 7%, almost 7.5% of, uh, links that you got compared to the number of emails that you sent out and, um, using the techniques you described, that's really not that involved of a process, um, you know, once you get the data and, and can use it. So, no, right. thanks for sharing that. That's, um, I'm sure will be helpful to people out there listening. Um, so, uh, obviously, you're, you're now, uh, you have a full-time business either with your sites, and now you have SEOSherpas.com, uh, where I know you do some consulting as well. Um, wh what's SEO Sherpas all about, um, and what are you doing over there? Sure. So, um, you know, I, I left my full-time job uh, about a little over a year ago, in October of 2011. Um, even though my websites were making more than enough in all of 2011 to have me leave my job, um, you know, my wife and I were getting married. We wanted to, uh, to wait till the right time. Mm -hmm. So I left my job in October 2011 um, to focus on my sites and to build a SEO consulting company. Um, ironically, the week after my first week, um, working for myself, uh, a Google Panda update hit, which really, really hurt me. Um, it, my camping tent site lost about 30% of its traffic. Um, my glacier site lost about 20, 25% of its traffic. Wow. Um, a few of my online EDU websites, um, which rightfully so they lost almost all of their traffic. Um, so that sort of put me, uh, with my back against the wall to, uh, really focus on developing other revenue streams. Um, I've since recovered my glacier website, which is great. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to see that it was, I wouldn't say it was a false positive, but there were some issues of uh, duplicate content across the domain that I think really impacted it negatively. Mm -hmm. Um, so I started up SEO Sherpas as a consulting business, and uh, that's gone incredibly well. Um, it actually generates um, about 50% of my total revenue, um, and you know it, it's nice because I get to work on a variety of different websites, um, variety of different industries, and um, work with people. You know, as an internet marketer, as I'm sure you know, you uh, can sit behind the computer for a lot and not have much uh, real person-to-person -person interaction. And, um, yep, this allows me, go What's ahead. That? Go ahead. Oh uh, yeah, no, this just allows me to get out there and, and meet with people and sharpen my sales skills a little bit, um, or, or a lot of it, I guess. And, uh, it's, it's been great. I, uh, I really enjoy it. Um, and plus it's just a little more financial security in an industry that 
you know, if Google hates you tomorrow, you could lose a lot of your income. Um, now, for, for your consulting side of your business, are you working with uh, local companies there in Colorado or um, just a- anybody that approaches you online? What, what's your target market there? Sure. So right now, if you go to seosherpas.com, you'll see that there's a, a full blog there now. Um, and that's a – that um, you know I give away a lot of advice on there trying to – to help people who want to make a full-time living online but don't have any money for an SEO consultant. Um, so, you know, giving away high-quality content for people. Um, in the beginning, you know, I, I take any client that would want to work with me, of course, and I still do uh, as long as they're a nice person mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and I had the time to take them on. Um, I've had clients, though. Most of my clients are based in Colorado, but – I've had clients um, out of Michigan, um, out of Florida, um, and I had a client out of New York recently as well. So, oh, and um, Maryland. So all over the place, really. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but yeah, I think that's uh, answering your question there. Yeah. No, no, it gives us a good idea of uh, sort of what you're doing um, and things like that. So. Somebody were to approach you that wanted consulting a, a business. Um, wh- what exactly is it that you're doing for them? How? Wh- what's your process? What do you do to go about improving their rankings in Google? Um, sure. So, a variety of things. Um, you know, I I offer basically two different packages. Um, one is where I'm a their consultant for six months, and it's a a full package of um, a site audit. Um, optimizing their site properly, keyword research, um, running link building campaigns, um, all that really juicy, important stuff. Um, And then there's also, I have clients that just hired me for an SEO audit where I take a full look at their site, um, analyze every little bit of it um, from making sure that um, they don't have content um, that's inaccessible to Google via JavaScript or robots.txt um, to um, optimizing all of their pages. You know, we, I'll use a, I do a full scrape of their site, um, optimize their titles, meta descriptions for specific keywords, URL structure, and all the sort of like geeky SEO stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, making sure the the canonical tag is implemented correctly, um, making sure that Googlebot can crawl their pages. I I'm working on a client site right now that, that uh, their robots.txt is so messed up. Um, somebody had like disallowed and allowed every single different bot to crawl specific areas of their site, and it's just like, whoa, 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 we gotta take a step back and just like every bot crawl everything of your site except these two areas. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know that that's worked really well. Um, an audit actually got one of my clients onto the front page for water bottles. Um, hmm. Which, uh, I mean, it helps that they are one of the leading water bottle manufacturers. Um, right. So that really helped in my efforts. But, uh, you know, it's just SEO best practices. Um, yeah. So you're able to dive into basically any site and take care of whether it's on page optimization, um, all the sort of meta tags and, and thing, keywords and title tags and everything you mentioned there. Uh, exactly. to, to, to developing a link building campaign if they need it uh, to help them to get better rankings. So um, now there's a ton of questions that I'd love to ask, but I don't want it uh, to get going too long here. Um, you mentioned um, that you're still working on lots of sites. Do you have any other projects uh, that you haven't mentioned or that you'd like to mention a little bit more that you are working on right now? Any big plans going on? Sure. Um, so Outdoorequipment.com has been a big site um, that I've really devoted the last six or seven months to, and um, it's been an utter failure so far, <laughs> which uh, has been really aggravating um, because you know I think it's uh, got a very unique twist. Um, basically, I'm interviewing on camera um, people about their outdoor gear, thinking that people who you can't review a piece of outdoor gear if you haven't been using it for months to a few years. So I'm interviewing people about their outdoor gear and, and posting it and it's really high quality content, but for a number of reasons, it just hasn't been going too well. Um, 
another another project that my my wife and I are actually going to undertake. Um, my wife is uh, six months pregnant right now, uh-huh. and we're going. I recently acquired the domain name brilliantbaby.com, and uh, we're going to be building a website uh, on on that. She's a, a first grade teacher, okay. and um, has a, a background in education, and everything, and a master's in it. So we're going to be uh, building a website around, um, you know, how to make your your kid more intelligent. Um, so that's something we're really excited about. And uh, another thing that we just didn't touch on, um, and I don't know how relevant it would be for your readers, is uh, my domaining business, um, okay. which is uh, essentially buying domains in the aftermarket um, and reselling them to businesses. Which uh, has been a fun little venture recently. Okay, so, yeah, no, I'm I'm pretty interested, and I think people out there would be interested in hearing about it. What uh, what can you give us any examples? I mean, what sort of domains are you buying, and who are you selling them to? Sure. So you know, I, I can't give any examples of my private domain sales, um, just because out of respect for the buyers, um, they're not disclosed. Um, but I'm I'm buying things. Um, some well, the sales prices aren't disclosed. Excuse me. Some things I've sold, domains I've sold recently have been um, AspenWeddings.com is a domain I sold recently to a hotel out in Aspen. Um, I sold um, OCAttorneys.com recently to an attorney out in Orange uh, Orange County, California. Um, and then through the aftermarket of GoDaddy, I sold um, WeddingVideo.org which I bought for $300 um, in August of 2011 and sold it last month for 1500 which was a nice, nice. little return. Mm-hmm. And um, I recently sold uh, through the aftermarket of Afternick. I sold um, online MPH, which stands for Masters in Public Health. And that sold um, for $1,500 as well for something I purchased um, – believe it was around sometime in 2011 uh, for $69. Nice. Um, so, but the vast majority of my sales have been uh, from actually reaching out to companies that could benefit from a domain name I've acquired and essentially just marketing it to them. Um, mm-hmm. And that's been a lot of fun. Um, it's uh, been up and down. Um, and, you know, I've spent this year, I've spent, uh, Thirty thirty eight hundred dollars roughly on domain names, um, but I've sold um, seventeen thousand dollars worth of them. So um, nice, yeah. It's a, a nice little uh, another way to diversify the revenue stream, which um, you know doing this full time I think is very important to have a diversified revenue stream, so you're not just relying on Google. Yeah. So to follow up to your domaining uh, experience there. So essentially you're finding domains that you believe um, have some additional value to, to existing businesses. Um, What, I mean, is there any criteria you're using or are you just seeing, okay, these domains have keywords in them that I believe are relevant, get high search volume or whatever. And then you're approaching businesses that you believe they would be relevant to. In a nutshell, yes. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of people in the domaining industry that use um, various metrics, including um, monthly exact match search volume and and cost per click, mm-hmm. um, and, and that's important. But I've found that most of my domain sales that are for phrases that have very low search volume, but are much more sort of like um, like brandable. Br- not necessarily. I mean, brandable a little bit, but more like location plus service okay um has been very successful for me and um i use aftermarkets such as uh, godaddy's auctions Mm -hmm. or namejet.com to find domain names that people are letting expire and uh just picking them up um after they've expired and uh, you go into auctions with other people and um outbid them and uh acquire the domain name and then resell it Ideally, ideally resell it. Right. Certainly have. That's the idea. Had many more failures than successes, but uh, the successes have certainly outpaid the failures. 
And so yes. how are you reaching out to these businesses just uh, via email and um, telling them that you have the domain? Yeah, essentially. Um, I've, I've gotten a nice streamlined process down with my virtual assistant um, where I'll give him a list of URLs um, and tell him to research who owns them in various TLDs or various extensions. Um, mm -hmm. And then um, tell him to do a number of Google searches and to take the results on those Google searches and compile a spreadsheet for me of the URL, the email address, the name associated with the email address, and the phone number. And uh, similar to um, the clubs and organizations marketing strategy, um, just use a mail merge to reach out to 50 to 100 different um, businesses that would find the domain name useful. And that's the key, you know, is, is having an actually useful domain name. Right. Um, because if you have a crap domain name, nobody's going to buy it from you. Sure. No, oh, awesome. Thanks for sharing the details on that. I, sounds like you have a lot going on, Perry. Um, <laughs> a, a little too much at times. You got, but, you got uh, your hands involved in quite a few things. That uh, I definitely know where you're coming from, though. I have got a lot going on myself. So, so um, that's awesome. I I think um, what you've shared uh, gives us a lot to think about and check out. Obviously, the sites you've mentioned. Uh, as well as the success and the techniques that you shared with us. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to share that maybe we haven't mentioned up to this point? Um, you know, shameless plug, <laughs> check out seosherpas.com. Um, you know, I'm still still young in the blogging sphere with that and uh, trying to provide really awesome content for, for people, I think, similar to like your audience, that, uh, you know, people who want to, be living this kind of lifestyle like you and I are so fortunate to have accomplished. Um, and I really genuinely think that anybody with a, a great work ethic can accomplish this. Um, it just, just takes time and patience, which uh, is hard to come by in this day and age. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, definitely go check out Perry over at seosherpas.com. Is there any other way, Twitter, Facebook, anything like that, that you'd like people to get in touch with you? Yeah, you know, I'm on Twitter um, at SEO Sherpas. Um, not all that active on it, but uh, that's probably my, that's really my own fault as uh, I don't have haven't really been pushing my Twitter account too much. But feel free to give me a follow, and or you can check me out on Skype. Um, shoot me a message. Uh, I'll always reply to anything via Twitter, Facebook, Skype. Um, my Skype's Perry Rosenblum seven one seven. And yeah, you know, if you have any questions or want to just chat, shoot me a message and I'll do my best to get back to you in a timely fashion. And, and you know, I love meeting people in the industry. So awesome. Thanks for sharing. Um, love the success story. Love hearing about not only your glacier travel guide site, but the other things that you've done as well. Um, it's given me a lot to think about and certainly a lot of people out there listening, I'm sure as well. So thanks again, Perry, for your time. Cool. Thanks for having me, Spencer. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much.